was a dark and gloomy night, and I did not want to have a glass of wine with a total stranger. Here is what I heard about Jennifer. She was a Christian, a conservative, corporate clientele, and an avid golfer. She was only two minutes late, and yet I heard my inner narrator beg me to send this text. Traffic is horrible. Can we reschedule? And then she walked in, tall, blonde, and gorgeous. I waved at Athletic Barbie. <laughs> well, I pulled out of the garage into the stormy night. I so wanted to cancel, but somehow my car just kept moving. And here's what I'd heard about Katie. Super successful, a liberal Buddhist prison educator and had founded this just amazing literacy nonprofit for kids. And as I walked over to the table to meet her, I could barely focus for the 400 gazillion tattoos screaming for attention. I sat down and I smiled awkwardly. So this was in 2018 and it would become the first conversation of many. In each other, we found a shared intellect, two women who believed in the values of education, entrepreneurship, and freedom for all. A mutual friend had introduced us because we were each passionate about brain-based tools, and we could have seen each other as competitors. And we did circle each other for a while, like alphas do, yet we realized that we were strong like iron. And iron, it can either sharpen iron or create a whole lot of destruction. We chose to sharpen. So over the course of the next three years, we traveled together through the fractionalization happening in our society, flipping between Fox, CNN, the pandemic mask. Remember those vaccine arguments? Trump, Biden, and we had heavy conversations about race and privilege. And we sat and we watched January 6th unfold together. And if you, if you think that political polarization is not crept into the workplace and infecting your culture and your productivity, you're living in an illusion. 42% of employees surveyed cite a serious work down relationship problem in their organization as a result of political polarization. We, we represent this divide and there are clear gaps between us. Yet, what did Jennifer and I do while perhaps the rest of the nation has been fighting or avoiding one another. We set out on a journey. We wanted to know what are the skills that would be necessary for people to use in a divided world where everyone is struggling to communicate and collaborate. And that's because we, we are you and you are us. And we are all stitched in this thing called a human suit. And it finds itself so uncomfortable in relationships that are diverse or different and friction when it hits the human suit, it puts it on edge, and it is terrible for building connective tissue. So we want to share with you some practical and tactical tools that will help you bridge gaps. And these are the four C's of how Katie and I bridge our own gaps when we're squeezed or under pressure, and how you, how you too can show up and transform nearly all your relationships. Number one, show up clean. Life, it moves fast, and we, we come in hot way too often. We show up stressed out, distracted, or reactive. Showing up clean, it means that you are calm, present, willing, and able to engage without shutting down or being triggered. And this takes intentional effort because there is a hidden power player that is infecting nearly all of your daily interactions. We call this invisible force Amy and she is riding shotgun on your shoulder at all times. She influences how you show up, especially in your most diverse or challenging relationships. Amy's real name is amygdala, and we have personified this tiny cluster of neurons at the back of our brain to remind us all that our hardwired biology often wants to dictate how we show up. Now, let's do a mini brain lesson. Would you mind touching your forehead with me? Right here, this is your executive function, and it's where reason, logic, language, curiosity, collaboration, empathy, and the ability to be clean lives. Now, Amy, when she encounters an idea or a person that makes her feel anxious or disrespected, she just spews these chemical cocktails, those fight or flight ones right here, and they attack your executive function. Your words become totally irresponsible and your ability to communicate, collaborate, a total wreck. Now, Amy, 
She is absolutely kicking in just seconds before your executive function can. So she's cutting you off at the knees and pretty much hijacking your brain's ability to show up clean for up to 26 hours. From a psychological perspective, this is when you retreat. You retreat into your arsenal of evidence, which is your lived experiences, your identity labels, your values and belief systems. And your psychology is protecting your unique sense of self in the human suit. So what can we do? What can we do to disrupt our hardwired biology and the way our psychology has developed? Growing self-awareness, it is paramount to your success. So we offer you the metaphor of a finger trap. Being in relationships these days, let's be honest, can mimic the feeling of being stuck in this finger trap. Your human suit, it wants to pull away, and that creates tension, when the key is to move closer to create space. So here is a technique that works. The next time that you feel your body get tight and your thoughts go sour and your tongue wants to go off the chain, we want you to go to the bathroom. We want you to go and wash your hands in very cold water because what it does is it will help reset your nervous system. And while you're doing that, you're gonna coach yourself in the mirror. Ask yourself, what is the best possible outcome for this interaction or conversation? And are you in charge or is Amy in charge? And then declare that you will show up clean. Number two, show up curious in business. Collaboration is key. And we all know the importance of psychological safety in supporting people to be able to bridge gaps and do meaningful work. And it is critical, yet, there is an additional piece. A study of 44,000 people found that what makes for healthy, safe relationships actually boils down to just one thing, psychological flexibility. And the study demonstrates that for people to actually show up and wrestle with new ideas, new people, and new ways of thinking, that psychological flexibility, it is the answer. And it's just a fancy way of saying, you gotta move closer in the finger trap with pure curiosity. What does it mean to be truly curious? So we facilitate a lot of sessions with leaders and professionals at all levels. And we go in and we make group agreements. Every single person in that room proclaims that they will assume positive intent and be open-minded. They pledge to be curious. Okay, newsflash, people suck at this. <laughs> they, they say it, they know it, and they don't do it. Now, you are hardwired for curiosity. I mean, think about a toddler that fearlessly explores their world. Yet, as you age, as we age, the research shows that it is our perceptual curiosity that plummets. If I were to ask you, are you a perceptually curious person? You would probably say yes, because you probably ask another person a lot of questions. Well, Jennifer and I, we call that committing curiosity fraud because more often than not, you might mean well, but you tend probably to peck others with questions that are meant to <laughs> cajole and convince and make them come to your side of the argument or the aisle. This is creating a power struggle over someone rather than that collaborative relationship with someone. And that's because Curiosity and psychological flexibility are actually an energy of how you engage with someone. So, back to the finger trap. When you want to move closer, come with real wonder and avoid the most common question we've been taught to ask, why? The problem with why is it creates a defensive response both in your body and in your brain. Okay, so feel the impact of these questions. Why didn't you take out the garbage? Why is your sales pipeline so lean? Why are you running late today? Be honest, did you feel a little middle finger energy creeping up in your body? <laughs> I did. So to build connective tissue, you've got to dump why. We need Amy out of the mix. And instead, try these three phrases. Tell me about, share with me, what about? Tell me about your sales pipeline. Share with me, what has you running late today? And here is a great way to use those three, those three phrases to start a conversation. Choose to have a one-way conversation 
rather than a two-way conversation. Most of the time, we have been taught that we should converse like this. Hey, Jennifer, tell me about your weekend. Oh, it was great. We went hiking the Sierra Nevadas. Oh, my Nevadas. God, I love hiking, too. You, you should hike that flume trail that everybody talks about. Please don't do that. So a two-way conversation, it doesn't actually allow for the depth of listening that is required for someone to feel heard, experienced, or respected. So here is the paradigm shift. In a one-way conversation, focus all of your perceptual curiosity and energy on what the other person is saying about their life and emit that desire, that desire to say, me too, because then you just make the conversation about yourself. And uh, while we're at it, let's avoid shooting all over people, right? Like nobody <laughs> wants to be should on. Another thing, curiosity isn't this staring and nodding game. We've been taught that active listening and relationship building looks a little bit like this and it could not be less true. Mm -hmm. Okay, look, I know I'm exaggerating, but can we please stop creeping somebody's Amy out with our interrogation spotlight? Instead, try this approach. It'll optimize the brain. Sit side by side. Take a walk. Let them know you are actively engaged by saying things like, yep, what else? Tell me more. And there is great power in being a terrific listener. So if you are a shitter, Remember that the word listen, when it's letters rearranged, spells silent. So magic will happen in the silence. Number three, show up collaborative. So you have shown up clean. You have shown up curious. And that is actively accelerating the level of trust and respect between you and another. You've also been a great listener. And now it is your time to contribute, and because you listened so well, they will actually be able to hear you. So the conversation can move one of two ways. The first way is super simple. There is nothing for you to add, so thank them. Because the truth is, most people want or need your ears. They don't need your mouth. The second move is what we call the power of the invitation. So when they are done fully sharing, thank them, and then ask, how can I show up for you right now? Ask them, do they want your perspective, your advice, maybe that you want your honest feedback. And for your contribution into the conversation, can we please get out of the but business? Anytime you're inclined to say but, replace it with the word and. And changes the dynamic of how people listen. And removes the competition between two clauses because two things indeed can be true at the same time. I love Jennifer, but she is different than me. I love Katie, and she is different than me. And all of this, all of this work, it is useless mm -hmm. if you don't wrap it up with the fourth C, care. Care is the glue of all relationships. Care is where trust and respect flourish. Care is like a pair of glasses through which you can choose to see any interaction. Care sees the human suit, its flaws, and its possibilities. And when you truly care enough to take the time and understand the perspective and the story of another person, it becomes very difficult to deny them their dignity or their value, even when they aren't your cup of tea. And even when you didn't want to have a glass of wine with them. So one last thing, and um, we truly, we truly believe this. So important. The American workplace, it probably is the last epicenter where we practice daily democracy. And these are the skills that are needed right now in a divided world in order for American collaboration and innovation to stay alive. Because most of us, we don't get to choose who we work with every day, but the truth is, we all need each other. The quality of our conversations has never been more important. It is time to level up. So show up clean, show up curious, show up collaborative, and please wrap it all up with care because it is all on you. So how will you show up? 
You have the power to improve or deteriorate relationships. You also have the power to connect through differences and silos. So how will you show up to bridge the gap? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Hey.